Hello, my name is Dr. Eric Dean. On behalf of the teaching team, I'd like to welcome you to the subject of real-world microeconomics. Real-world microeconomics is the subject of microeconomics, individual decision-making, how businesses make decisions, individual markets and industries, market prices, all of that normal microeconomic stuff, but with a focus on real-world actual decision-making. If you've taken a microeconomics course in the past, though, you probably remember things like optimization or maximization of profits, that sort of thing, sort of bread-and-butter models of orthodox economic theory. We won't really be doing a whole lot of that in this course. Instead, we're going to take what we call a heterodox approach. That's the actual historical and social context of how businesses choose their strategies or set their prices, how consumers decide what to purchase, the social context of why they have those preferences, and then goes on to understand how they make those decisions within that kind of broader social context. So why are we taking this heterodox approach? Mainly because this is a subject in real world microeconomics and unfortunately there isn't a whole lot of the real world in your orthodox microeconomics subjects we're going to pull from all sorts of different schools of thought post-keynesian institutionalist marxian ecological economics and so forth mainly because that's where you see models and theories of microeconomic decision making that are rooted in how decisions are actually made one of the things we're going to be looking at is once you get rid of the supply and demand model you have to start looking at the actual interactions of businesses. It's a complicated process, but it's much more close to the real world of actual business than you might get in another microeconomics course. In this subject, students are going to be learning about the standard topics of microeconomics, so consumption decision-making, businesses, markets, market prices. But from this heterodox approach that's going to focus more on, again, social context and historical evolution. So, for instance, consumers are going to be conceived of in terms of not just making decisions to satisfy their own desires, but also to demonstrate their social status to conform with certain lifestyles. Another thing we're going to look at quite extensively is the historical evolution of capitalism as we know it. Uh, we'll think of that especially in terms of how society and the economy has changed in response to certain technological innovations, especially fossil fuel based production, mechanized production, digital computing and communications and that sort of thing. One of the reasons that's important is because those technological innovations have really changed the way business is done in modern capitalism as compared to, say, the capitalism of Adam Smith. The time of the small merchants, the pin factory, the small traveling salesmen, that's all been kind of replaced by modern capitalism, which is the time of the large corporation, what Alfred Eichner called the megacorp. Large corporations make business decisions, they influence the economy, they influence politics, they influence society in ways that those smaller businesses of Adam Smith's time just never could. For instance, we'll talk a lot about pricing and how prices are set by businesses making decisions within the context of their organizations as going concerns. You'll note here that supply and demand in the orthodox model of an equilibrating price system isn't really going to come up. Instead, we're going to talk about accounting procedures. We're going to talk about business strategies, the relationship between businesses and their financiers and their competitors, that sort of thing. The actual context of the real world business decision making that we're going to be looking at. What we're going to find out is that when you take this more heterodox approach to that kind of all important topic of prices and economics, you find that prices aren't really an equilibrating mechanism. They're not a balancing mechanism of preferences versus costs or supply versus demand. Prices are actually a tool of businesses that allow them to engage in their long-term planning and ultimately to survive as organizations. When you combine this heterodox approach to microeconomics with the theories of modern monetary theory and the real-world macroeconomics that you'll be learning in other subjects, I think you get a clearer picture of how the actual modern capitalist economy works. And I really want to emphasize that this subject is designed to be complementary to the modern monetary theory and the real world macroeconomic side that you'll see in the rest of this program. They're designed to fit together into one big real world approach.
In this subject, you'll be watching lecture videos, you'll be participating in online collaborative learning activities, reading readings, completing assessments, all sorts of good content, all designed to help you learn the skills and the knowledge that you need to do microeconomic analysis. You'll also be completing written work and developing a presentation for the end of the term that will analyze using the microeconomic theory you've learned a particular topic in ecological sustainability. I hope you enjoy real world microeconomics and welcome to the